introduction so i am uh, professor stevashantini from uh, jaffna university um uh, as uh, she introduced me that i joined in 1991 october as a probationary lecturer and uh, now serving for more than 20 28 years um uh, so now we have a department uh, for fisheries at uh, university of jaffna a quick glance about this uh, history uh, that the department uh, was established in uh, year 2009 and uh, 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 realizing the need of the of this uh, fisheries sector uh, that uh, we established a department in 2009 and uh, the for the very first year we had only 12 students and uh, this year uh, all together uh, level first year second year third year and fourth year we have 125 students so the the most important uh, the international uh, collaboration uh, with uh, our department at the university they are these two projects uh, the first one is uh, we won uh, one uh, no part project uh, in collaboration with the Uh, university of tromso um, and also with the uh, university of rohuna uh, nara um, uh, in uh, 2018 at the beginning of 2018 now almost uh, two years have, uh, two and a half years have passed and two batches of students have been sent to <laughs> university of uh, tromso for uh, for a short term training and uh, they also registered for a, a mphil degree here at uh, jaffa university and uh, in addition to that uh, we have a collaboration with the uh, iceland uh, rajavik university uh, that is uh, the uh, for the unu training program uh, they uh, recruit uh, one at least one staff member from our department uh, to get the hands on training in uh, in different uh, fisheries uh, uh, different different fisheries uh, topics so la the first time uh, one one of our professional lecturer went there and uh, she got a training in fishery economics and management and uh, for the second year uh, we sent uh, one uh, assistant lecturer and uh, she got a training in post harvest technology so now uh, we come to the point uh, about this uh, fish production no no training program ഫിഷ്ലൈനിംഗ് <laughs> marine fish production because the country's uh, major uh, contribution sector is the marine fish production so actually the marine fish production uh, in 2018 it was uh, 39 so it get your again we may observe uh, it has been 
uh, reduced by 2.2 percentage in 2015. The major uh, contributor in uh, current fisheries to total production was 83 percent in 2018. And the major fish products are like tuna and yellowfin tuna. So the most uh, the contributing uh, districts are Tangol and Go. And uh, uh, in addition to that, Kalutara, Jaffna, uh, Puttalam, and Trinkamali are also contributing uh, to a uh, to a uh, little extent. Uh, and uh, we may remember that uh, Jaffna district contribute, contributed to the uh, Sri Lanka's uh, total production uh, about uh, 29 uh, percentage in 1983. So after that, uh, due to this internal civil war and uh, the restless situations, the, the production of Jaffna district has been reduced and uh, now, even now, uh, that uh, the Jatna district production has not been achieved the earlier um, the earlier uh, target uh, which was uh, 29 percentage. So when uh, we consider these uh, fisheries uh, subsectors, uh, uh, we all aware that uh, the marine uh, fishery sector can be uh, divided uh, mainly into two coastal, offshore or deep sea fishery. Uh, and then uh, inland fishery and also uh, the aquaculture. Uh, so this is just a, a figure uh, to sh give some idea about the uh, fish production uh, in Jatna district. Um, 1983 to 2013, um, I have the data of up to 2018 and but I couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't accommodate uh, this uh, in this graph. So you see, in the uh, 1983, we had a, the Dashna district had a very uh, high production, and later in 1988 suddenly declined, and then again increased, again declined from 1990 uh, to 2003 due to this uh, the civil unrest. Uh, it has been uh, it was in a very low level, and again it is increased 2008 then again uh, decreased and uh, now we may observe that it is uh, slightly uh, there's a increase in the fish production but uh, after 2013 uh, 30, 2016 2017 and 18 uh, data if you observe that uh, we, we can see we may note that there is a uh, decline in 2017 and 18 so it is uh, just to show the fish production along with the maximum uh, sustainable yield. So uh, we all know that uh, this uh, Dr. Fridjof Nansen vessel, uh, it was doing a survey on this uh, fish uh, diversity, the fish uh, stock assessment in 1979. So that the maximum sustainable yield was estimated as the 15,000. And uh, uh, here uh, we may note that uh, this beyond this uh, maximum sustainable yield uh, the production has gone and uh, uh, so that may be a, a reason to for the decline in the recent years so similarly uh, the offshore production also uh, the according to this uh, uh, reference that uh, there's a, a maximum sustainable yield and that has also been uh, uh, increased uh, beyond that uh, level. So when we observe this, uh, the the marine, the wild fish varieties, uh, they are in Sri Lanka, uh, 1,013 species, and uh, according to our research in the northern Sri Lanka, we recorded 224 species. So these are uh, some uh, photographs uh, that uh, I have. Uh, gathered here uh, for the uh, bony fishes. So the mostly uh, these fishes uh, from the northern region, we may observe these carangids, uh, leonetids, siganids, uh, uh, ceranids, sharks, uh, stingrays, uh, lujanis, uh, sardinella, uh, and uh, all the varieties. So uh, when compared to the uh, southern region, the, the most of the varieties are uh, can be found here in the uh, northern part of Sri Lanka. So these are some sharks and rays, the cartilaginous fishes, and uh, prawns and lobsters, uh, crabs, uh, squids and cuttlefishes, and sea cucumbers. 
So they are uh, 16 sea cucumbers. Uh, we, uh, our department uh, did uh, one uh, research project with the IUCN and uh, in 2016, and uh, we reported 16 species in the northern part of Sri Lanka. So this is just to uh, go through this, uh, the regulations and the history about the fishery. The coastal resources are, uh, we may assume that uh, uh, these coastal resources are fully exploited. The ex efforts shifted to deep sea fisheries, providing boat and equipment subsidies uh, somewhere in 1990. And uh, the 1996, uh, we may found that uh, the beach scene and state net fishery. State net means that uh, in the northern province, we can observe the Sural Valley. Sural Valley fisheries is the most intensive uh, fishing technique that the fishermen are using. So these uh, fisheries were, uh, these nets were op operated in 1996. And according to this act uh, number two of 1996, uh, the conservation and development of aquatic resources were uh, very much addressed and uh, it was uh, considered in 1996. And later 2004, due to the tsunami, uh, the most of the fishing community were affected, the boats, nets and everything were damaged. And in 2010, the civil war in 2010, uh, and after the, uh, the end of civil war in 2009, uh, the